We are continuing with the CPM method, but this time we want to see how do we do the backwards pass calculations. Now, we will begin this time from right to left. The beginning point will be the completion time of the project. Now, this date can, do, can be the same date as the one that we got with our calculations using the forward pass, or sometimes in the contract it stated that you must deliver the project at this date. So this date will be the point at which you will uh, begin the backward pass calculations. Uh, in this condition, uh, the contract will uh, put a constraint on you. Yeah, this is the case where you have a constraint on the finishing date of the project. If you have no constraints, then you can begin the backward uh, pass calculations with the value that you got, the completion time of the project that you got from the forward pass calculations. Now, as we said, we'll go from right to left, and uh, with this method, we'll be establishing the latest start and the latest finish of each activity, such that we do not delay the completion time of the project. And I can say, how many days can, can I delay the start of this activity and the finish of this activity, such that I do not delay the whole project? Now, we have some now we have some rules for the backward pass. Our starting point will be the end activity, okay? Or T, the completion time of the project that we got from the calculations using the forward pass, unless we have a constraint, as we mentioned, that you must deliver the project at, let's say, uh, at week 30. So week 30 will be your starting point. If you do not have any constraint in the contract, then you have to begin with T, which is the completion time of the project that you got from the forward pass. Now, the latest finish of any activity will be the minimum of the latest start of all the followers of X. We will see how in the example. And the latest start of any activity is the latest finish minus the duration of the activity. Let's continue this exercise that we have done the forward pass calculations. So my starting point here is 20 because I have no constraints. I didn't mention that we have any constraints. So the completion time of the project was 20. So this is my starting point, week 20. And I will go backward. So this means that I'm getting here, this is the latest finish. How do I get the latest start? As the rule says, the latest start is the latest finish minus duration. So I will say 20 minus the duration, it's 19. So this is the latest start of the activity G. Now, if this is the latest start of G, so this means that the predecessors F, D, and E, can they can finish their activity, okay, and they have till week 19. So this is the latest possible finish. So I will move this number 19 here, here, and here, okay? Because I know that even if I finish early, I have maximum till 19 in order to deliver the completion of this activity. So this is the latest finish of F, okay? Now you see it's different from the latest start because I'm seeing how much time can I delay the start of an activity without affecting the completion time of the project. So it's 19. Minus 3, it is 16. 16 here is moved to activity C. Why? Because we agreed that if uh, C is the predecessor of F and F has a latest start of 16, so I have till week 16 to finish activity C. So it is 16. Minus 6, 10. Now regarding uh, the predecessor of G, we said that we have moved 19 here, here, and here. So with the 4D, it's 19 minus 11, 8. E, it's 19 minus 9, it's 10. Now uh, I want to go to activity A. Activity A, here we have a problem, okay? Because we have two followers. This is what the rule uh, mentioned, the second rule. A has two followers, C with the latest start of 10 and D with the latest start of 8. I have to look at the minimum between the latest start of the followers. So I have to compare 10 and 8. Which is the minimum? I will choose it. So it's 8. No, so, so the latest finish of A is 8. 
Now, why did I choose the minimum, not the maximum? Imagine that I took uh, the value as 10. So this means that the latest finish of A is 10. So this means that the latest start of D will be 10. Plus 11, 21. Plus 1, 22. So what happened to the completion time of the project? It was shifted by two days. So I affected the completion time of the project. And we said that we want to get the latest start and the latest finish of each activity such that the completion time of the project is not affected. So here I have to take the minimum between them. So the latest start of A is 8. This is how we apply the second rule of the backward path calculations. So 8 minus 8, it's 0. Uh, here, uh, we said that we chose between 10 and 8 to get the values for A. Now we want to get the values for B. Here it's 10, and I have no other followers, so 10 is moved here. Okay, this is the latest time to finish activity B. 10 minus 4, 6. So we have to compare A and B. Okay, you see that activity A had latest start and an early start of 0, early finish and latest finish of 8, both the same values. However, with respect to B, early start 0, latest start 6, early finish of uh, 4 and latest finish of 10. So we have a difference, 6 minus 0, 6, 10 minus 4, 6. So this means that I can delay the start of activity B by 6 days without affecting completion time of the project, so I can tell this, this activity is not critical. Because if it was critical, then it would be uh, critical to the completion time of the project. It is activity A that it's critical. If I delay the start of activity A by one day, then the completion time will be delayed by one day. So this is a critical activity. So the definition of the critical activity is the activity that if you uh, delay its start, it will affect the completion time of the project. Now, can you tell me what else do we have critical activities here? Let's look here. No, we can delay this one. 10 minus 4, 6, 19 minus 13, 6 as well. We can delay this by 6 days as well. So when you see that the number upward and downward is the same, so this means that this is a critical activity. So D is critical. 10 minus 8 is 2. 16 minus 14 is 2. So I can delay C by 2 days. F can be delayed by 2 days. However, G cannot be delayed. So I know that activity A, D, and G cannot be delayed. So this is your critical path. So this is the path at which you shouldn't change any or delay any activity on this path. All right. So if I want to define the paths that I have in my ne network, it is the route at which the uh, sequence of the activities or the activities take as a sequence. So the first path or the first route is A, C, F, G. And this is not the critical path because it has a duration of 18 weeks. The second path is A, D, G. It is a critical path because it has a duration of 20. Second, third path is B, E, and G. And it has a duration of 14 days. Let's look at the summary of the path. This is the first path. How do, this is how we calculate its duration. We just count the duration of the activities, get the total, and we will be able to get the duration of the path. You see that this is the critical path because it has the longest duration. Okay, This is the path that we shouldn't delay because if we delay any activity on this path, the completion time of the project will be deleted. Now, I will leave, you, uh, leave this slide for you in order to revise the calculations that we did for the uh, for backward pass calculations. And here I, want you, uh, here I want to show you something. I want to show you the reason that I didn't put an ending note here in this network. You see, as uh, we mentioned from the beginning, that we must have a starting node and an ending node uh, for the network all right here I didn't have a finishing note okay I just I had a purpose I wanted to show you the following here imagine that I didn't have an activity G okay so this path finishes at activity F and this one at D and this one at E okay now imagine that this is my network 
and I want to begin with the backward pass calculations, okay? Now, the most common mistake that I see the students do all the time is that when they don't have an ending node here, they will put the values for the backward pass wrong, okay? So they will say that uh, I finished F at 17, so I will begin the backward pass calculations with 17, okay? So you will go backward with the calculations. With respect to E as well, I finished at 13, so I will begin the backward pass calculations with 13. Now, why did they do this mistake? Because they didn't connect all the activities to an ending uh, node to know that the completion time of the project is 19 days. This is the longest duration, okay? So the, the project cannot be completed before uh, week 19. So this is my completion time of the project. So you must, we said that it's uh, the first rule in the backward pass calculations that you begin from T, which is completion time of the project, which is here 19. So if you didn't place a finish node, you will forget the completion time of the project and you will be doing these mistakes. So please pay attention, always, always connect all the ending activities to an end node, okay? You see, it should look like this. When you connect them to an ending node, on the ending node, you will determine the completion time of the project, and you will remember that you will have to go backward from this point, and in this way, you will not make any mistakes. So the network should look like this. This was the ending node G. You will have to add an ending node so that not to forget what is the completion time of the activity. Here, since G was connecting all these activities, you didn't see a problem. But what if you didn't have G from the beginning and you forgot to put the ending node? So you will do the mistakes that I have mentioned. Uh, so basically, uh, this is how we do the calculations related to the CPM, okay, the critical path methods. So when I say perform uh, the CPM calculations, for example, for this exercise that will be your homework, when I say perform CPM, this means that you will have to draw the network, okay, you know the durations, you'll have to draw the network and put uh, the duration for each activity, do the forward pass calculation, the backward pass calculations, and determine the critical path and its duration. All of this is considered as doing the CPM calculations. Thank you for listening.